everyone. Good morning. Oh, just make sure I'm presentable. Good morning, Crummers, and good morning, Gina. Hello. Hi. Oh, wow. Another Sunday morning. Um, I'm back again. Um, I'm excited for this one. Uh, but as usual, I'm just going to give us a few minutes down here just to let people come in and join us and uh, um, and then we'll get going. Um, so happy Sunday, happy 18th of October, happy birthday to me, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Ian has gone out on his bike so it's just me and my kitchen this morning on my birthday but I'm cool with that. It's not, it's not a thing at all. <laughs> but today we're going to do some birthday baking. And I've been agonizing over what to bake um, for this for uh, the last week. And I actually really only decided yesterday what we were going to bake. Um, and I thought I'd, I'd ask you guys, and, and people had said um, Swiss rolls and um, what else do we have? Uh, Boston cream pie and chocolate and sprinkles and cocktails. Thanks. <laughs> Not sure I'm ready for for um, cocktails at 10 a.m. So, <laughs> oh, Gina says she's happy birthday. I'm going to pop over onto the Facebook page as it's better. Okie dokie. We'll see you on there. It's exactly the same feed. So if you are joining us from the land of Facebook, the Facebook group, or the YouTube channel, hi, I'm Lou. I'm the writer, recipe developer, um, I guess you could say host <laughs> of Crumbs and Corkscrews. And every Sunday morning, we are baking here in my kitchen. And it's really deliciously easy bakes, cakes, desserts, all sorts of things. Um, there's no fancy equipment, no fancy ingredients. It's just really good baking. And I, I, I started this in lockdown and we're still going and you guys absolutely love it. So I'm really pleased that you all keep coming back on a Sunday morning and joining in. So we've got a minute to go and then we're gonna get stuck in. But we are going to be making donuts today. I've thought about doing a birthday cake, and I've thought about doing um, brownies and all sorts of things, but we're gonna save the cake for next week. And I'll tell you all about that later. And I thought, do you know what I haven't had in a long time? Because we haven't been into the supermarket, it's a fresh donut. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. So really excited. Um, to, to be getting into that. I've got everyone coming in. Gina has come over from YouTube onto the Facebook page. Good morning, Gina. Good morning, Crummers. Ah, I love that. And I'm just gonna, my dear, dear friend, Lou. Oh, thank you. And I'm so glad you're here as well. <laughs> I miss you guys. I miss everyone in lockdown, it's crazy. <laughs> Everybody's so spread out that we're not seeing each other, but um, we will do eventually when it's all safe to do so. So, as it says, let's go. Woo. Where are we gonna go first? So, as usual, we're in the kitchen. Um, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna talk to you all about the stuff that's going on here and how we've got it set up and what we're gonna be doing. But we're gonna be making Donuts. Now we're not going to be making these guys, but these are baked donuts. Um, they are already on the blog, so you can go and find those out. But they're little mini ones, um, you know, like you can get in a pack in the supermarket. And they're more of a cakey donut. And what I was really looking for, and when I was looking through stuff and thinking what could I bake, what I wanted and what I'd been missing, and it's quite naughty, is that bag of donuts you can get from the supermarkets that's covered in sugar and it's filled with jam and you, you want to lick your lips but you're trying not to and you end up with sugar all around your face or maybe that's just me 
all those um you know those ones the the k the k ones the crispy ones <laughs> with that nice custody filling and the chocolate ganache top and that sort of a meter said on the group this week why don't you do a boston cream pie and i love boston cream pie i just don't think we've got enough time to do it in here but i thought you know what I could do a cream filled donut with the the custard and the and the chocolate on the top and that's where i was going with that so we're going to do that but we're going to do a slight twist on it but we're actually the ones we're going to do today are chocolate filled ones so you could do this with Nutella or anything like that but they're going to be nice and light and fluffy and you can throw sprinkles on them and chocolate icing and and all sorts um going on <laughs> just want to say thanks <laughs> hi kim oh don't worry if you've nearly missed the start you can catch back up that's why we have i've got that little four minute counter on now so people can get in um but th these are nice and light and fluffy and there's no hot oil going on here we're not going to fry these we're going to put them in the oven and they're going to bake and then they're going to be all nice and warm and fluffy and we're going to roll them in sugar um so it's we've got no hot pans of oil because knowing my luck that's just a disaster waiting to happen <laughs> so we are going in for a baked donut we're going to fill it you can just do them as ring donuts or, or just the donut balls from the center um what they call them, donut holes um, and all sorts. But again, like the other recipes that we tend to do on a Sunday morning, it's a base recipe. So you can tweak this, you can fill it with jam or custard or, or cream cheese filling or all sorts. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's get stuck into our ingredients. Now, this is a yeast. So the picture that we just saw is a, a flour and a yogurt and a sugar mix with eggs. So it's more cakey. These are a yeasted mix. And a bit like the raspberry lemon swirls we did back in the summer, you know, the cinnamon swirls, it's a really easy dough to make. You just leave it to proof and then come back. I made a dough last night, um, and I'll talk to you about that when we get to that. But let's just check out our ingredients. They are simple, store covered ingredients as usual. So we've got in the fridge, when I get out, we've got, we're gonna be using full fat milk and a little bit of unsalted butter. And I'm using unsalted here because I am going to add salt to the ingredients. So I don't want to have too much salt going on in there. So we're using an unsalted butter there. If you've only got salted or you want to use salted, if you just cut slightly down, probably to about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, that's your best bet. We're then going to be using a strong white flour. So this is just a white bread flour. Um, you can use plain flour if you want, or all-purpose flour, but we're looking to get that nice glutinous stretch on our dough. So we want to be using the stronger flour because it's going to give us, when our dough proves, it's going to make all that elasticity and make it all lovely and light and fluffy. So if you can, white bread flour. I think there's still some in the shops at the moment. Um, it was a bit crazy on lockdown, but I think it's there now. <laughs> We're also going to be using a, a dried yeast. Now this, I won't tip it too much. It's just like um, little tiny, tiny little granules. Um, this is a fast acting one and you can um, get this in the supermarkets or in a little sachet or you can buy in bulk. Um, we're using the fast acting one so we don't have to activate this before um, we add everything to our dough um, and mix that through. But again, I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to that. So this is fast acting yeast, uh, dry yeast, 3.5 grams, very precise. And we've also got some caster sugar, just a little bit in there. And that this with the yeast, the yeast is gonna feast on the sugar and it's gonna help it to grow and do all that nice stuff when it activates and, and gets all nice and airy and causes our dough to rise. So we're gonna be using the caster sugar to feed our yeast. And we've also got half a teaspoon of 
fine sea salt. I'm using fine sea salt. You can use table salt, but just a little bit less. The fine stuff. The thing with the table salt is because it's um, it's a lot stronger. So the fine sea salt is is just not sounds really weird, but it's not as salty. Um, but this, if you have sea salt, this is where you want to go. Not the flaky stuff, not the crystals, because we're going to put this all into our mixture, and it's just going to get. It's again, it's working the sugar and the yeast and everything to activate it with the flour. But we want to keep these two, the yeast and salt, just apart for the moment. <laughs> and for our filling, what I'm going to do on camera, we're going to make a chocolate ganache cream filling, so it's a little bit more smooth and more thicker than a normal chocolate ganache. Um, and we're going to use this to fill um, some of the donuts with. So I've got some dark chocolate here, um, 100 grams in there. In here, I've got ooh, 200 grams of chocolate spread. This is normal chocolate spread, but you could use Nutella if you wanted to, or um, you could use a Biscoff spread, although you wouldn't be adding the chocolate. So. Um, and things like that. So we're going to make a chocolate version and we've also got some double cream in the fridge. If you wanted to, you could um, uh, use custard powder actually or make custard. Um, I'm not going to make custard on camera because you could um, look after it and the hops over there. But you could use, if you didn't fancy making your own custard, you could use a ready-made custard or a good old uh, custard powder. This is an own brand one, but obviously Birds is our big one. You can use either of those. And then because somebody said cocktails, um, I have gonna, I'm going to tweak a batch up. And, oh, it sounds clinking of bottles this morning. But we're going to do one. I haven't decided what I'm going to put in it yet. I might pop a drop of Tia Marie in it for a coffee one or um, like a Bailey's Irish cream, although we're out of Bailey's, so we've got good old Bally Castle, which is LD's own brand, but it's just as good. Um, this, uh, you can make an Irish cream one, and then this is one that I picked up and we've not tried it yet. Um, and this is, again, it's an Aldi one. This is a, it's a gingerbread flavour cream liqueur. So this has been waiting for... Christmas, but is um, is a gingerbread version of this, so it's going to be nice and spicy. So I haven't decided which one I'm going to do yet. I'll just get all the bottles up. But when I do that filling, I will post that all up in um, in a post. But for today, we're going to go with the chocolate cream filling. <laughs> Gina, you are a bad influence, but yes, it's my birthday. I've got a shot of Bailey's in my mouth, in my coffee at this time of the morning. <laughs> so then, what I did last night was, I have already, because this dough does need to prove, I have already got a batch ready, so we can, uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, we're going to make a half dough mix, which is these um, quantities that you've got here. So that's going to make this size of dough, um, and this will make about six to eight donuts. Um, but then we're also going to make another batch because I'm going to do a couple of different ones um, and then post up. So this was made last night and it's a fridge dough. So you can pop this, if you want to, you can pop it in the fridge, get the dough ready, pop it into a grease bowl, cover it over and pop it in the fridge overnight. Now I took this out then about eight o'clock this morning to bring it up to room temperature and let it have a little bit of a, a rise and, and it all coming together. So this will be ready to go um for making into our donut balls and then onto our second proof so we'll be doing that shortly but in the meantime we're going to make we're going to get to this stage first so pop that one just out of the way for the moment and here we go so i'm going to be using um let me just pop the old hair up
I'm going to be using the stand mixer today, um, the KitchenAid, with the dough hook on. Um, purely because it's quicker for doing it for you guys. But you can make this by hand um, if you want to. If you've got a hand mixer with the dough hook on, you can also use those as well. Um, but we're going to be using the KitchenAid with our dough hook. Um, and it just takes away a lot of the work to be quite honest. If I'm being lazy. But first of all, what we need to do is we want to get our milk warm um, and get it activated, ready for. Oh, I forgot, you want an egg, a small egg beaten. Let's just get these bits out. We've got new little lights today. The pumpkins are retired until next weekend. These are little little star cookie cutter lights that my sister-in-law um, got me. Uh, so we've got little little twinkles at the back. So yes, what we're going to do first is we're going to start off by heating our milk. And our milk, we're then going to add our butter to it so we get this warm mixture. Because the yeast does need something warm to activate it and get it started with all that sugar. Um, but what we don't want it to be do is too warm, um, too hot. So if we get this on first, this is our milk, 137 millilitres, yes, it is. Uh, again, you can do this in the microwave, again, in 30 second blast, and make sure it's warm. We're not taking it to boiling, but we're getting it hot enough that when we add our butter in, it's going to melt. So just pop this on the hob for the moment. and get that warmed up. So whilst that's warming up, we'll pop the other bits and pieces in. We're gonna be using cold butter. We don't want it to be um, room temperature soft because when we, we're gonna use the heat from the milk to melt this, we don't want it to be too, too soft because it'll become really greasy really quickly. So from the fridge, cold cubed butter. And like I said, half an egg um, or a small egg. Um, our eggs are quite large, so because this is, um, if you were to do this as uh, one, if you doubled up, you'd be using one medium egg, but this is one small egg, so it's about 30 mils of beaten egg yolk and white. So if you've got the, um, you can get, get liquid egg um, in the supermarkets, the whites and stuff, you can use that, so it's about 30 mil. So into our stand bowl then, or if you're doing this by hand, into a large mixing bowl, we're going to add our flour. So like I said, this is strong, plain white flour, um, bread flour, and that strength of the gluten, the, the, the fibres in there, the proteins is going to, what's going to help our dough sort of become elastic, and then when all that, as the as the yeast works and you get the air puffing it up from the reaction inside, those gluten fibers are gonna stretch up. But it means then when you when you tear it apart, when you tear a donut apart, it's all nice and fluffy inside. It's that combination of everything and those the strong gluten within the proteins within the flour that help make it all nice and fluffy. So we've got our flour in here. Next, we're going to add our um, sugar. So this is just normal caster sugar, um, 37, 38 grams. And that can just go straight on the top. There's a little bit left in there. You could use, um, you could use a golden caster sugar if you wanted to, or a bit like we have done recently, like last week when we made um, we use the cinnamon sugar, you could use a cinnamon, uh, spice cinnamon um, caster sugar instead, or you could use a vanilla one, or actually I found my lavender sugar, or oh, Ian found the lavender sugar the other day, or you could use that as well um, to um, bring more of a flavour to it. So that's in there with here. Now we're going to add our salt and our yeast. Now, I said about keeping these apart, and we want to keep them apart until we're ready to mix. 
because the the yeast is ready to go. It's 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 gearing up to go, and the, what it needs the sugar and the the heat from the milk, that warm liquid, to get going. But if we put them together with the salt, the salt at the moment in this um, format is going to kill our yeast. So I know it sounds weird, and you might see people putting everything all in at once. Um, because we're just going to wait for our milk and our butter, you want to add them side by side, not side by side, but separate if you can. So I'm going to add my salt onto this far side of the bowl and just tip it in. So that's half a teaspoon of the sea salt, fine sea salt. And then I'm going to add my fast acting yeast to the opposite side. So I know for the moment that they're keeping separate. And we're just going to literally leave that for a moment and check on my milk. There we go. So our milk is nice and warm. And now we're just going to add our butter. So this is just cubed cold butter straight from the fridge. It is straight on bridge. <laughs> we chopped it up last night. And in it goes. And just the heat from the milk will melt that butter. Like I said, it's not room temperature. It's not, it's not all, it's not very, very soft butter because we want it to gradually dissolve, uh, dissolve melt into our milk um, rather than it just become a greasy, a greasy um, liquid. So just going through like that, it will melt really quickly. Um, but what we don't want to do is put our milk in straight away because our milk and butter mixture is, you see, I don't know, you might not be able to see on camera, but it's steaming, it's, it's very warm. Um, we want to let this come down now to a warm temperature but not hot. Like the adding the salt next to the yeast, it would kill the yeast. If this is too hot, it's gonna kill the yeast as well. And it, it's not something to be scared of. It's not a, uh, it's just about temperature. Um, she's gonna say, uh, children, but if you've ever tested, you know, when you test a baby's bottle before you give them milk, it's too warm. Um, you, we're going to do something similar, but obviously not with a bottle. <laughs> but we want this to come down to a temperature where actually you could take a clean, <laughs> clean finger and put it into the milk, and you're not feeling a temperature difference between your finger and the milk. So it's sort of at body temperature, so about 30 something degrees. If you wanted to, you could use a thermometer and check it, but. Your, your finger and your, your own temperature regulations is just as good. So, and the, the cold butter will also help bring the, the temperature of our milk down. So, it's just going to leave it for a moment because I can still see it warm. What we're also going to do when we add this into our dry ingredients is we're going to add the egg. And this you want, so we just pop this to one side for a moment just to cool a little bit. Let's say this is one small egg, about 30 milliliters of egg, white and yolk all beaten together. You want it to be beaten uh, when you add it so it's already sort of emulsified. And we're also going to, we're going to crack open. Kim, if you've got yours ready, I'm cracking open. <laughs> my first bottle of homemade vanilla extract. Um, it could probably go a little bit longer, but I'm, I'm gonna try it. We're gonna go in for it. Um, we're just gonna add a teaspoon of the vanilla, uh, half a teaspoon of the vanilla extract as well. So just whilst this uh, cools down, we'll have a chat. I'm gonna be popping, this is now ready for a post, um, so I can take some pictures of it now. This is our own homemade vanilla extract. Ever, ever so simple, um, vodka and some vanilla beans into a bottle, sealed and then popped in the cupboard for eight weeks. Now I think we made this back in August, um, 
I did want to leave it till the end of October, but I thought, oh no, we're going to use it today. Um, whereas the rest is still maturing. So we're going to put this up oh, here. This is. Vanilla extract. Oh, it smells amazing. <laughs> if you are not wanting to make it with alcohol, you can make your own homemade vanilla extract with um, glycerin that you can get from the pharmacy or in some food shops, like if you're in the UK, places like Holland and Fair and things like that. But yeah, we've made this and it's going in. I'm so excited to, to um, use it. Let's just, let's just wash a hand and then I'm just gonna test this milk quickly. So clean hands and clean finger, like I said, with milk we want it to be, it's about body temperature, so when you put your finger in, it shouldn't be a ooh, 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 that's hot, it should be a in, out, there's no real difference. If it's, uh, if it's feeling cold, then that's good. Um, if it's feeling really cold, you might just want to bring it up to heat a little bit, but if it's feeling hot, hot, then it's, it's too much, it's gonna kill the heat, so. That's still a little bit warm. So let's give it a moment and then it'll be fine. But what we can do in the meantime then is get everything ready. So in here we've got our plain flour and we've got our sugar and then we've got our yeast on this side and our salt on this side. So we can pop it on, the stand mixer and clamp it in ready to go. It's just there we go. We are good to go. So what we're gonna do then is we're gonna add we're gonna start off with our egg. I'm just gonna pour it this. It's all going in the same one. So we're gonna start off with our egg. Just add the egg Again, I'm going to try to one side just for the moment before we start getting going. Let's get rid of that edgy bit. And then we're going to add our vanilla extract. Kim says she can't, can't wait to use my extract. I've been waiting to use this. I keep smelling it and looking at it and, and things. As this is eight weeks, so it will get darker um, and thicker, um, depending on, you can start to scrape out the pods if you wanted to, but it is gonna get darker than this, but it smells amazing. Um, it, it definitely smells of vanilla. So we're gonna put half a teaspoon of, oh, I've been waiting for this today for a lot of weeks. Straight, oh. In. And um, we made um, a big bottle as well. So in the cupboard, um, in the dining room, we have a really um, deep, uh, a, a, almost just under a litre bottle of vodka, which has got, I think I've got about 18, 15 or 18 vanilla pods in it, and it's getting really dark, and I can see it, because it's, it's that. But this is, this is ready to go now. Um, hey, excited to use that this morning. So we've got our egg and our vanilla extract in there and we're going to now start slowly with this and then add our milk mixture in as we go. So I'm just gonna start this on low speed and just let it do its work. I 
and it will start to come together and then just lift it up a little bit. Whilst that's spinning, let's have a look. How long does the homemade vanilla extract last? Well, it's just vodka and vanilla pods, Gina, so it will last quite a while. The big bottle that I've got in the cupboard um, next door, which I'll show you next week, actually, I'm just, every time, I, when I get to the bottom of this, I'll just fill this up from the large bottle and top that back up again. So that actually, it will last as long as you want it to last. You want to make sure, though, that your, your vanilla pods are always covered with the vodka, because obviously that's going to be the bit that's helping preserve them. If they're sticking out the top, you don't, you could, they might go a bit manky. So you want to make sure that your vodka is always, or your glycerin is always above the, the, the line of the vanilla pods, which is why this bottle, little bottle, these guys have been, um, I don't know if it'll come up, but these guys have been split um, in half there. So it will last as long as you want it to, and I'm just going to keep popping it up. So, oh, whilst we just, this is now going, so I'm just going to, I can see it's starting to come together, it's pulling the, the dough and the flour and the butter and the milk mixture and everything together into a smooth dough. Now, the, a dough of dough can be quite sticky because we've got, we've got that milk in there, we've got that butter. But it will come together quite nicely. So if you're doing this by hand, you're going to start to sort of bring it all in together and knead it through. And it's going to take about 10 minutes to do by hand. If you're doing a stand mixer, it's about three, four, maybe five at the most. You bring it all together and you knead it through. So if you're watching Bake Off, if you've watched Red Week, Mr. Hollywood is. <laughs> um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop this because I can see it's bringing everything in on the sides of, the, of our bowl, but we just want to give it a little bit of a help to combine it all. So I'm going to just pop it up there. And this is a dough scraper, or you can use your hands or a spoon. But I'm just going to, what I want to do is make sure I've got everything combined together nice and well. So I'm just going to scrape off for a moment. And this is how our dough is starting to look. So what I just want to do is bring everything into the centre again. Because the dough hook isn't reaching the bottom of your stand mixer. It's it's sort of, when you watch it, it's like, oh, is it like a kid's toy? It's got, it sticks to the middle, the dough sort of, and it becomes like this little flexy C thing um, going on. So what I'm just going to do is just scrape down. And when, we, when this is ready with the dough hook, what you'll see is that actually the sides of the bowl are clean because it's as it's as it's bringing everything together and it's kneading that dough it's getting all that stuff on the side and bringing it together and you'll find that when you're doing it by hand as well so let's just oh, put that back on there and we're just gonna we've lifted the speed a little bit now so let's just get rid of this So it becomes a really smooth looking dough. And, and this bit here, what it's doing is it's working that glue and it's what it's getting it all going. So we're going to make that nice elasticity that we want so when the yeast and everything is working together and it pops up as it grooves and rises. Um, uh, it's, it's having a workout basically. So if you're doing this by hand as well, you're really getting in there, you're really putting in good knees and pulling it and bringing it back um, on itself and, and 
stretching it all out. So, like I say, it's about 10 minutes doing it by now. Just going to lift it a little bit for the last minute. You don't want to overwork it. Just like if you were making bread, if anyone makes bread. Here we go. Scrape it off. And I say you can do this by hand. If you want, let's get all the little bits in there. And it is a bit of a sticky dough. It's not a dry dough, so don't think, oh no, it's too sticky. I need to, um, I need to add some more flour. You don't be tempted to do that because what will happen is you'll just end up with really heavy, dense donuts there. And it's the same with the bread as well. You don't, you don't want it that way. So, I'm just gonna. You never know. Those last little bits might be the bits that need. Let's move that out of the way. And here now, as you can see, it's pulled most of it away from the side. This bit here is just where it's been um, with the dough hook where I've taken it off. But it's uh, the rest of the sides of the bowl, as you see, it's pulled everything away. It's combined everything through. And that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to do a swap now. So, because this bowl is too big for my fridge. But what we need. Now is uh, we're going to need a little bit of flour in a moment. So I'm going to take this. So this is this same dough um, has been let, done an overnight proof in the fridge and then has come up to temperature, room temperature for a couple of hours this morning as well. You can do it uh, overnight in the fridge and then make the donut balls and then do your second proof if you want to. But I got everything out this morning whilst I was sorting things out, so it just made sense. So this is all, and it'll be nice and bouncy. So what I'm gonna do is switch over that dough with this dough. Do this by hand, like I said, or with your thing, and I'm just gonna shape it, tuck it in on itself. Like that this bowl has been lightly oiled just with um, a little bit of a spray oil or flavorless oil. I'm just gonna pop that in there, like that. Gonna take the dough from this morning and just pop that in there for a minute because we're gonna be using it. And then I'm just gonna reuse my plastic wrap. Now because I'm not proving this overnight now, I'm doing a fridge proof. I'm just gonna pop this on the side somewhere warm. So it's quite warm here in the kitchen today. It's probably part of the warmest part of the house. So I'm just going to leave this to prove for about an hour, hour and a half, two hours, until it's about doubled in size. Um, the overnight proof in the fridge will be slower. It might not come as much up as you're expecting, um, but it will, as you've seen, it has had a little bit of proof. This is just going to sit now. I'm just going to pop it over there, and that'll be two hours probably by the time I've done all the cleaning. <laughs> Tidied up, it'll be ready to do the next session. So then, once we've set our dough aside to prove, we need to make our donut balls. So 
Let's get rid. We're not going to need the mixer again, so I'm just going to pop that away. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can make donuts or you can make donut uh, rings, ring donuts. That's what I was looking for last time. So you're going to be putting um, these straight onto your baking sheet. And again, as before, I've just got a normal baking sheet plus uh, these are my reusable silicone um, baking, like baking liners, I think. Uh, these are reusable. If you don't have them, you can just use normal baking part from greaseproof paper. Because what I'm going to do is we're going to sit the donut balls on here, and we're just going to let them prove on that as well, and then they'll go straight in the oven. Um, I did forget to get some flour out. We are going to just dust this each of these a little bit with some flour as well. Just get them ready. So I've got two trays for this, um, depends how many you're making, you might need more, so. Oh, hi Mel! <laughs> Happy birthday, thank you, we're making donuts. Because <laughs> I wanted donuts. So we're just uh, lightly dusting our, just spread the flour over. The baking parchments are all right, the, the baking liners are fine, but just a little bit of extra, but it's just a dust, like I say, we're not adding too much to them uh, there. So, now, depends how you want to do this, you can, if you want to make sure all your donuts are the same, weigh them. So what we're going to do then is find some space. Just going to give my dough in here a little bit of a, a knock back, knock the air back out of it. Because we don't want that. So couple of times, five times, knocking the air back out. And the easiest way for donut balls, filled donuts, a pair of scissors, clean kitchen scissors, tear off a little bit. As you see, this is that elasticity I was talking about. See, it's got a stretch on it. And actually, probably a little bit more than that. Roll it into a ball. Now, you can, if you've got a ball shape, um, roll it just as you would do and then tuck it under itself. So you're sort of making a little, it's really difficult to show you this one, aren't they? But you tuck it, curl it under, tuck it under. So almost any seal is beneath it. Anyone watches Barry Lewis on YouTube with uh, his cooking? They'll have just said seal and then bye, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I won't sing for you. So we've got a little donut ball, and I'm going to see how much that weighs, so we can sort of hope the scale batteries are working. about 53 grams so they want about 50 grams of donut so I'm literally gonna pop that onto my baking tray there I'm gonna probably do a couple like that let's pull some off see what that comes out at 46 45 again roll it through and just tuck it under itself And then when you're popping them on the tray, they're going to grow, they're going to spread. So you want to make sure that you're leaving, a bit like when we're making cookies, enough of a gap between them. So a good couple of inches around. 
So what I'm going to do is, because I've done this in two batches, I'm going to probably, I'm going to make a couple of donuts like this, and then we'll do half the mixture as a rollout as well. That's a bit bigger. There we go. A nice roll. Anybody that's got kids and pasta scene, or if you're a cake decorator and you're used to making fondant, and then just tuck everything underneath. Give it a roll. And we'll probably get another two on there, and then we'll roll out. So a little bit small. Maybe another one. No, we're getting number two. There we go. So knead it through and a roll. So we're almost there. These ones. That's a big one. When you start doing this, you'll you'll figure out how it sort of works for you of getting your donut balls the right sort of shape. Actually, that's the best one to take. So it looks oh a little bit. If anyone's been to Pizza Express and a garlic dough ball, it's like those little things. <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave these. These are gonna prove again in a warm space for about an hour until about half the size. So put a tea towel, clean tea towel, we're gonna pop over the top of these and we're gonna leave them to go. So That's that, and then they'll be ready for um, just going straight in the oven, straight on that on the on the tray. So we don't need our scales anymore. We are going to roll out the last lot of dough. Then we're going to make some ring donuts. So let's get rid of that. We're just going to want a little bit of flour for our work surface, and it's just like anything. We don't want to be adding too much flour to our dough mix because it's not what we want. So then, spread our flour out and today I'm just going to be using a normal wooden rolling pin. You can use the, the, uh, the um, what's the word, poly thingy, the, like the big one that I used for the rolling the fondant, it's not plastic but it's, it's like that. But. So with the remainder of our dough ball, we're just going to give it a, a final knead, actually we're going to take our watch off, and any rings, not we've really got any on today, just give it a, a final knead, because we're going to be rolling this one out. And then with our rolling pin, just bread dough. If anyone's rolled pizza dough out, you'll know how <laughs> rolling this stuff out. If you remember as well from the from the raspberry swirl one. Once you get going and you get it aimed in the right direction. It will do what you want it to do, but it's that elasticity. It's going to start. To, it's going to want to spring back. I'm going to just get it to work with you a little bit. There we go. So we don't want to be rolling out too thin because we want to give our donuts some body. Um, and what we're going to be doing then is just with a it's about two and a half inch pastry cutter. Just and if you just going to cut out. If you don't want to make the dough balls by hand and you want all your donuts the same size, you can do this 
one as well. You just don't, um, if you just aren't going to put your, your donut holes out. So, this is our little donut. So, he's going to go on there for the moment. Whenever I think of donuts, I think of my brother, which is bizarre, but it's because he calls me a donut. So. 43 years of pure love from my brother. So I've got a couple here, and you know, we've still got quite a bit of dough left, so let's give that another roll out. These are going to be a bit, they're not going to be as puffed up as big, as high as our other ones, but they're still going to do their thing. So let's roll it through and pour it all spread back on itself. Another little donut. And again, we're making sure that when I place them on the tray, I'm giving them oh, I'm giving them some space there. So I can probably get one more out of this. So this is the half batch. This is the quantities that we've got here. So we've got, what did I say, five balls over there. And they're quite big donut balls. And then we're going to get five rounds out of this lot. And actually, I'm just going to take my last bit. This can be a tester one when they're paid. <laughs> and just make a little donut. I'm going to pop that on the other tray. And then for our ring donuts then, you could, um, a bit like we did, uh, in case you could use an apple core to take out the centre. I'm just going to use the end of a piping nozzle or anything like that um, you can do. So just push it in. Here's our little donut holes. <laughs> Aren't they cute? You can buy them in the supermarket, so expensive. But it's just the off cuts basically. <laughs> And just popping them on with our rings. And don't forget, you might think, oh, well, they're looking a bit small, but they are still got, they've still got a second proof to go. So um, they still have got a little bit of a rise. There we go. So we've got our donut rings and our donut centers. So we're gonna just um, pop those over with the other ones to prove for about an hour. Underneath a clean tea towel, make sure it's a clean one. You're not been doing any washing up with it. We've got a fresh one out of the drawer. Actually, let's put a second one on. Well, make sure they're well and truly covered over. Oh, thank you, Denise. Thank you. That's lovely. I hope everyone's well still. Um, just want to show you this. This is our dough that we made just before we cut out everything. This is the one we've made this morning. Um, I can see it's starting to go smoother on the top and that's when it's starting to prove and start to rise in that air that elasticity of our gluten and our, our in our flour is just going to smooth over the top so it might look a bit wrinkly when you put in there but when it starts to do its magic it will start to look and pop up to smooth so we want that that's still got a good hour to go um until it's ready so then, this is all, that's how we're going to make the donuts. It's really, really simple. It's not really a lot to go on on those. Um, we're going to make a quick chocolate filling. And then, um, 
I'm going to let you guys off to your Sunday. I said, Ian's cleared off the mountain bike for a good couple of hours, um, which is nice. <laughs> Just let me wipe down here from the flower. chocolate ganache filling but it's not a chocolate ganache that's going to be overly rich like um like you'd use for a cake or anything uh in the two seconds we'll talk about that can you use semi-skimmed instead of full fat milk denise yes you can do um it's not i would use um i'd use semi-skimmed at the the least uh, full fat if you can obviously it's just because it's that like it's that fat content that gives it the rich and the butteriness and that beautiful lovely um soft uh, gorgeous thing going on in the donut when you bite into it so yes you can use semi skimmed i wouldn't use a skimmed version or a um these one percent ones i think the, the purple top or something like that because they're um you, the, 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 they're effectively water, so there's nothing there. It's, it's the, it's all the goodness of the everything that that yeast is working and feeding on, and and the flour and and getting it all nice and um, together. So you want a little bit of fat content. So yes, you can use semi-skimmed, full fat if if you can, but semi-skimmed is good. And on the on the flip side, you don't want to be using cream or anything like that as well so oops hold on we're having number one <laughs> mr samaya knows me very well <laughs> there's also a box <laughs> i might have had some gin for my birthday <laughs> it, it's going to go down very well this evening andrew <laughs> i'm not ready for it just yet it's too early for gin when I'm when I'm trying to cook and bake, it's not too early for gin. <laughs> so, um, where are you? yes, Denise, you can use semi skim. Just try it's, 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 as, it's as low fat content that I'd go full fat milk. But on the flip side, we don't want to be going to like a gold top or a cream or anything like that because that's too much. It's that combination of the milk and melting the butter and getting everything. Together. So that's that's where you want to be going with that. So uh, this filling is just going to be a really quick and simple one. Like I said earlier, you can use if you want to, and you don't want to make your own custard. You could use a ready-made custard. Um, flavor it up. I'm going to be doing one later um, using I, I don't know. It could be a gingerbread liqueur. It could be a tea Maria, like a coffee liqueur, or it could be a Bailey, so an Irish cream version. Um, and so that I'll pop all on a different post. But for this morning, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a chocolate ganache, and it's a, just a simple uh, chocolate ganache. But it's not the sort that you'd use for um, like decor icing a cake or anything like that. We don't want it to be too thick. We still want to be nice and light. So when we break into our donut, you've got that really unctuous chocolatiness going in there. So what we're going to start off with is, um, I'm just going to make sure I've got a bowl to start, because I'm going to need that as well. Um, yes, I have. <laughs> um, we can reuse really that. So what we're going to do to start off with is we're going to be using 150 millilitres of a double cream. And we're only going to heat through to start with 100 millilitres. So I'm eyeballing this. <laughs> uh, I'm putting about two thirds of it into my saucepan. And then on this, I'm just going to pop this now onto the hob and heat it through. We don't want to overheat it. I don't want to burn it or catch it. So we're going to start on a gentle heat. 
and just let it do its thing. Now, as always, if you've got a microwave, you can do this in the microwave, do it in 30 second blasts. Those 30 seconds just means it gives you a little bit more control uh, than just whacking it in for a minute and seeing what happens because you'll don't want to burn your cream so we just pop that on the hob now because uh, i don't have my microwave uh, for a moment or two just to get it nice and warm and a little bit of a simmer it's not boiling it's just a slight simmer then once that's ready we're going to just like a normal standard um meringue uh, meringue ganache we're going to use our chocolate so uh, to and use the heat from the cream to melt this through. So here I have a hundred grams. I'm just going to check my book and the thing. Yes, a hundred grams of dark chocolate. This is about seventy percent, sixty, seventy percent. If you want to, um, it depends how dark you want it, how really rich. I'm actually using. I haven't got the wrapper to put it in the bin. The Cadbury's dark milk which is that combination of a dark chocolate and a little bit of a milk chocolate that's that's out at the moment here in the uk so um which is is actually it's a, a lush chocolate but if you've seen the adverts it's a throwback so jason donovan and kim wilder in the adverts uh, but it's really nice and um, we're using that here for our for making our filling because it's not going to be that intense chocolate hit that we're, we're going to get so just pop that in a bowl and get a pan stand because this is going to get hot so there and let's just check our cream so that's just melting melting that's just warming through warming through and then once the chocolate has been melted by the cream and it's all smooth, we're going to add in some chocolate spread. Now, this is normal, regular chocolate spread. This is actually the Asda one. Um, you can use Nutella if you wanted to. Um, I can't because of my nut allergy. Just keeping an eye on my cream. Here, uh, two seconds. I was going to show you the chocolate spread as well. Okay, right. We've got two things going on all at the same time. I'm going to do this first. So the cream is warm. It's hot. It's warm. It's not quite, but it's warm. So straight over the top of my chocolate getting it all in here and it's the heat from the cream that is going to melt your chocolate so don't panic if you think oh it's not happening straight away you need to give it a little bit of time check the hobby off so just give that a little coat for the moment and it is hot it's steaming so just leave that for the moment and it will melt it through. So just whilst that's going, we'll stir it in a moment. This is chocolate spread. This is just a milk chocolate spread from Asda. Lots of stores do their own brands. If you're in the States, you can get all sorts of different chocolate spreads. Over here, you get chocolate spread with caramel and teasers in it and crunchy pieces and, and, and white chocolate and milk chocolate and dark chocolate and caramel and all sorts. Um, or you can use good old Nutella, I can't with the nuts, so <laughs> we're using a good old chocolate spread. And you're going to want about 200 grams of this, and this combined with the chocolate is what's going to make it nice and smooth, not that thick, heavy ganache going on. So this is just, as you can see, the chocolate is just, oh, melting through there. Just make sure I get everything from the sides and through and once that's ready we've actually got enough here that it's going to um it's going to be enough for my um for the donuts that i've made 
plus some of the others as well for later. If you don't want to do all of this, you can you can easily make up a half batch, um, or you can keep it in the fridge and just eat it with a spoon. Not that I do that or have done that before. Uh, you can also, a bit like the Bailey's ganache that we did for the cheesecake that's over on the blog, you can add a touch of Bailey's in here as well if you wanted to. So this is our chocolate all melted through. And what I'm now going to do is just add the leftover cream. So it's the 50, about 50 mils left over. Um, and do that with this spoon. Because the cream is thicker when it's cold. We're not warmed it, this one up. Gina, if you're wondering, Ian has got plenty of bowls to lick today when he gets back from something. Um, always come to the door and ask for it. <laughs> and then we've got our uh, chocolate uh, spread. So in that goes as well. He might have to fight me for the chocolate spoon. Let's just get rid of those. And stir it through. Now we're not ready to obviously fill our donuts yet, but you can um, you can make this like I'm doing here in advance because you need it to cool down um, and thicken a little bit uh, slightly before you use it in your filling. If you go now, it's just too liquidy. Um, it's not going to happen. It's just going to be a bit in your thing. So you've given it a good, <laughs> what did Gina say? <laughs> He'll be happy. <laughs> yes, he will be. He announced he was going on a four hour mountain bike ride this morning. So he will be ready for donuts and chocolate and the bowls. So as we bring it all together to finally finish off our chocolate ganache, it will be smooth and shiny and all lovely. And as you can see, it's runny. Um, but that's fine. So what I will do now is I will just pop an, a little bit... I won't put a little bit of plastic wrap on just yet, but I will do eventually because I don't want the heat and any water to get in there. So I'm just going to pop this. It's cooled down. I'm just going to pop this now on the side to wait till later. And that's it really, that's as far as we're going to go uh, at the moment. I am going to fill them later, but obviously I need to, um, I need to bake them. But um, I will give you a quick rundown of how I'm going to fill them as well. But let's just have, uh, let's just have a quick recap. So we've made um, easy uh, birthday, yay, baked donuts this morning. These, one, these guys here are a slightly different recipe. They are more of a cakey donut. So if you don't want to try these, these dudes are over on the blog already. And then those little ones that you can get in the boxes in the supermarket. And they're just really, again, they're really good for making with the kids. But you will need something to mould them in uh, because they're more of a cake batter than um, like a dough, a bread dough. Uh, but they, this recipe that we've made here is going to make about 12 to 20 donuts depending on how big you go with them, if you want to do ring donuts or donuts with um, holes or all sort of ring donuts and donuts with holes are the same thing. If you want to do ring donuts or filled donuts and then have the donut hole. Um, but they are, the donuts you've seen is, is really quick and easy. We're just bringing all that ingredients together. You can do it by hand, you can do it in the, in the stand mixer if you prefer, if you just, um, and then leave it. So I did an overnight proof, um, that's what they're doing, or you can do it all in one hit. It is just the proving bit with anything bread that you know you need to have that time in. But actually, it's a couple of hours. So if you 
need to pop out, you go for a walk, you can watch an episode of Game of Thrones or something like that, <laughs> have a cup of tea, put your feet up, do the housework, whatever. So it's that bit that is the, which always people think, oh, bread is so difficult to make. It, it's not, it's the, it's the waiting bit, it's the being patient. So what will happen with these guys now is they've probably got about another 40 minutes left on their second proof. They're then gonna go into a preheated oven. I haven't preheated the oven yet because obviously we're not ready for it. But it's about 180 degrees C, 350 Fahrenheit that we're going to put the oven at. And they'll go straight in on the middle and bake. Now, there's a lot of rules of thought, a bit like when you're doing bread, that you want your oven to retain moisture. So some people will uh, sprinkle the baking tray where the donuts are with a little bit of water to create some steam. Oh, excuse me, hiccups. Or you can put a little roasting tray of water into the bottom of the oven as you preheat it. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna get a little baking tray, no bigger than this, pop it in, and then as the temperature of the oven comes up, that water will start to steam, and it will give you this steam oven. And I'll literally open the door and put my donuts in, straight in. Um, and let them bake. And they bake for about 12 to 15 minutes. You want them to be golden um, on the top. We don't want them to be burnt or black. So about 15 to 20 minutes. Then when they come out, you can do two things. When they come out, you could, if you want to do like a sugar donut, you brush them with a little bit of melted butter, have your sugar ready in a bowl and just roll it in it and pop it on the side and then fill it. What I'm going to be doing with these guys is I'm going to be taking them out of the oven and I'm going to be filling them first. So I'm going to start with, um, there's various ways. You want to get your, the hole in and get it all opened up. Um, Gina says she's looking forward to seeing the finished product later. Me too, me too. And, and they're eating it. It's one of those things, you know, we have, it's sort of, uh, it's difficult because I can't show you the process and then the finished bit and all of that sort of stuff together with these but we'll get it all in the blog post and I'll put a quick live up as well. But what we're going to do with the uh, filling is there's various ways of doing it. Um, this you might see um, on cake forums and stuff like this. This is a very long nozzle with an end, pipey end things. Uh, this is called a Bismarck nozzle and you can use this with a piping bag and, and push it in. So when you push it into your donut, give it a wiggle round to open it out and then you can squeeze um, the, your piping bag and as you slowly pull the uh, nozzle out, then the filling that you're, you're giving from the piping bag will fill the inside of the donut. You could just use a standard piping bag as well, just with the end chopped off and pop it in and fill it in, or you could just use uh, a, a normal nozzle as well um, to do it. You, you know, if you haven't got a piping bag, a freezer bag with the corner snipped off and to put all your filling in there. But that's pretty much, that's about as, you know, as easy as the fill gets. If you want to and you have, you, you know, when you're putting the hole in, do that first and open up the donut first. If you haven't got something like this, uh, you could use a small knife. Don't go in with anything too big, but just put that hole in there and open it up. Or if you've got a chopstick or um, a plastic straw or something, just to get in there and, and open up that center of your donut. That's where, that's sort of just how we're going to do it. But I will take um, a little, uh, a little video and then pop that up later for that. I did do one the other day for something else and I can't remember which I need to do. It wasn't the apple pie, um, it was whatever we made before that and I can't remember um, how we, we, we sort of get everything together. I've also, um, uh, there'll, there'll be a couple of different fillings and stuff so I will pop a little video up of how to do those final finishing touches as well and it will all be in the blog post but I am yes Gina I am looking forward to seeing the finished product as well I'm also looking forward to try it because I've been have a hankering now for donuts for a while so I'm ready for that 
Uh, let's just do a final recap of our ingredients and I'm going to let you lovely people go and enjoy your Sunday. So for the donuts, we used full fat milk and yes, as Denise asked, you can use semi-skimmed if you want to, but do not go too low on the fat content of your milk. Semi-skimmed or full fat is where you want to go. Not either, not higher either. You, the gold tops and creams are just going to be too rich for this. Um, we're using an unsalted butter because we're adding salt into our dough mix because it's part of what helps everything work together. If you want to use salted butter, just slightly reduce um, your sea salt um, or the salt content by about a quarter of a teaspoon. We're using a strong white flour, so or a bread flour, a white bread flour, because it's got that strength and that glute and the protein in it that's going to give us that nice elastic dough that we saw when we stretched those balls off. And that's going to um, give that nice, uh, when it rises, give that nice light and fluffiness inside. We use a fast action dried yeast, and you can buy this in the supermarkets in sachets or little tins. Um, you, can, you can use fresh yeast, but I've not made um, bread or anything like that with fresh yeast for a long time. For at home, fast action dried yeast is just what you need because you, you, it sits in the cupboard and it keeps. I have a jar of it that we bought. Um, like a pack now. Uh, Emma recommended it on the on a live back in the summer, and I bought a pack for a couple of quid off Amazon, and it's just sat in a kilner jar now, and that'll keep us going probably for about twelve months. <laughs> so it depends how much bread you're baking. Um, we use caster sugar. I just use a normal white caster sugar just to give our yeast something to eat and work with. Uh, you could use a cinnamon one, a lavender one. Uh, a vanilla one if you want to, or a golden one, but we want to use caster sugar rather than a soft brown or anything like that. We also use the fine sea salt. Again, fine sea salt looks like table salt, but it doesn't have all the bits and pieces that they, they use for table salt. So a sea salt is a more natural salt and is, is better for baking because you've got don't have a metallic taste with it that you can get with table salt. If you've only got table salt, that's fine. Um, just again, it's quite a, it's a little bit stronger, so just reduce that down a fraction. And then we use one small egg or beaten, and that's about 30 millilitres of beaten egg. Um, if you're doubling up this recipe, then use one medium egg instead. Um, that's about right. <laughs> For our filling, we've used the double cream, we've used the dark chocolate, I've used the dark milk chocolate from Cadbury's and the chocolate spread, or you can use the Nutella if you want to. And that's ingredients. And what I'm going to do when they're done is um, I'm going to maybe roll some in sugar and with the some melted butter and sugar, but I'm just going to use a chocolate um, icing and some sprinkles over the top of these guys, or just a normal. Uh, a, uh, white run out icing, just dip them in, take it out, put the sprinkles on the top and stack them up, a bit like Homer says. <laughs> That's what's just come into my head. Um, and yeah, it's really quick. Uh, you mix the dough up, leave it to proof, shape it and whack it in the oven. She says, I'm looking over there at the other side of the kitchen, which is where all my doughs are proving at the moment. Uh, I'll just give you a the balls have started to go, and the dough that we've made as well here. Um, it is starting to feel a little bit cooler in here, so I might move them to a slightly warmer part of the house. Anyway, I'm going to love you guys and leave you. <laughs> I've rattled on a little bit longer. I'm just looking, I haven't got my watch on, <laughs> I'm looking at the computer. Rattled on a little bit longer than usual, but um, it, it's, it's, I've enjoyed this. I've really enjoyed it. It's, uh, it's a lovely uh, Sunday morning and I can't wait to eat some donuts. So thank you ever so much for joining me on a Sunday. And oh, and thank you, Gina. I will enjoy the rest of my day. And thank you for, I've seen lots of people's birthday wishes pop in on the side. It has been lovely. Um, we're not gonna talk about age or anything like that. But yes, 
Next week, though, however, I wanted to, I did want to do a cake today, but I've saved the cake for next week. We're going to be making a pumpkin cake, but not a pumpkin cake, not pumpkin flavored cake. I'm going to make the cake in the week and we're going to get ready. We're going to be decorating a Halloween pumpkin bundt cake for next week for Halloween. So it's going to look like a pumpkin. It's going to be filled with lots of little things. and We're going to ice him and decorate him. Don't know yet if I'm going to do buttercream or fondant. I'm going to ask you guys what you think. Do you want a buttercream cake or do you want a fondant ice cake? And that's next week. <laughs> um, so it's going to be a diff slightly different one, but we're going to be gearing up Halloween. You guys as well have been making the Halloween gingerbread men. They've got mental on the blog and I've had pictures and I need to put them up. But if you have been baking them and anything that you've been baking, Drop pictures in the comments below, put them into the Facebook group, share them on Instagram, Twitter, and all of that sort of stuff. I love seeing what you guys make. But as always, wherever you are in the world, and if you are in the UK in any of those hotspots, I hope that you're all safe and well. Please stay safe and well. Look after each other. Look after yourselves. And I will see you guys all again next week. Thank you for joining me this morning. Take care and bye for now.